Amen. I'm grateful. I'm thankful for each and every one of you. Amen. May God continue to bless you and give you revelation and understanding of his will. Amen. Our scripture reading tonight will come out of John. Amen. The 25th, the 21st chapter, verse, amen, 15 through 23 in the New King James Version of the Bible first. Amen. Then we're going to turn to Romans 6 if we have time. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Give you a minute to get that. John, the gospel according to John, chapter 21, and beginning at verse 15. Amen. Give you a minute to get that. Praise God. Um, and it reads this from the New King James Version of the Bible. It says, so when they had eaten breakfast, amen, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, or in the King James Version, bar Jonah. Do you love me more than these? Now, mind you, this is the post-resurrection appearance of Christ. Amen. And uh, before that, in verse 6, 14, it said, now this is the third time that he had revealed himself to the disciples. This is the, this is the fourth, the third time. Amen. And so this is post-resurrection type ministry. Glory to God. Verse 15 says, so when he had, they had eaten breakfast, uh, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? And he said to him, Lord, Lord, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said to him, feed my lambs. Verse number, verse 16, he says, uh, and he said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? And he said to, the, to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said to him, tend my lambs. The difference, feeding and then tending, both are all part of the shepherding experience. And he said to him a third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? And Peter was grieved because he said to him a third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed. Glory to God. There it is again. Feed my sheep. Most assuredly, I say unto you, when you were younger, you gird yourself, you walk where you wished. But uh, when you are old, you will uh, stretch out your hand and others will gird you and carry you where you do not wish. This he spoke, signifying what death, amen, he would glorify God. And when he had spoken these things, he said, follow me. Verse 20 now. Then Peter turned around and, and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved. John often refers to himself, amen, not as John, the disciple, but as the one whom he loved, amen, who also had leaned on his breast, amen, at the supper and, and said, Lord, amen, uh, who is this one who betrayed you? That's what he said at the, at the supper, now, Peter, seeing him, said to Jesus, but Lord, what about this man? What about this man? Amen. He just finished, amen, basically uh, grilling uh, Peter. Amen. Peter's a little sensitive right now about it and said, now, you you talk to me about loving and about, amen, asking me three times. Now, he says, but now, what about this man? What do you have to say, amen, to him? <clears throat> amen. And Jesus said to him, if I will that he remain till I come, what is that to you? You follow me. Then this saying went out among the, the, among the brethren that this disciple would not die. Yet Jesus did not say to him that he would not die, but if I will that he remain till I come, what is that to you? Glory to God. What is that to you? Tonight I want to deal, amen, with this, with this particular subject matter, passion, purpose, and promotion. Amen. Passion, purpose, and promotion. Within the text of the three times that our God and our King asked Simon, the son of Jonah, do you love me? Amen. Uh, the word both says is translated love, but in the original context, Jesus asked Peter, do you agape me? Amen. And Peter 
amen, said, I have, amen, affection for you. Glory to God, homeboy. That's what is translated, filio, not the same agape that, amen, Jesus was asking for. Praise God. So he asked him three times, amen. So the point that I have to make out of the text and where we're going tonight <clears throat> is that Jesus in his post-resurrection, he's about to ascend unto the Father, but he wanted to know from Peter, from, amen, that he was basically leader, amen, uh, do you love me? Amen, do you love me? And if you love me, it's going to translate over into how you deal with my sheep and how you deal with the lambs. Amen, and the difference is between sheep and lamb is age. Glory to God. Amen. He said, he said, feed my lamb and then tend the sheep. Thank you, Father. Amen. So the ultimate cause that we're looking at within this text, amen, has to do with passion, has to do with purpose, has to do with promotion. Glory to God. Jesus is about to ascend and he wants to know, amen, from Peter, before I go, do you love me? Because it is your relationship it is your passion for me that's going to determine, amen, how you deal with my precious ones. The whole concept is about shepherding. Do you love me? If you love me, it ought to be demonstrated in how, amen, that you feed my lamb and how you tend my sheep. Amen. So the premises and the foundation that we can draw from that, amen, is, simple, is simply this. Our relationship with God through the atoning works of Jesus Christ, amen, uh, will determine how we treat one another, amen, our passion for one another. This week, we've been talking about, amen, uh, a new heart, glory to God, amen, and we must keep that course regardless of how people talk, how things happen uh, in church, amen. We talk, like to talk a lot about church hurt. Amen. Nobody was hurt no more than Jesus was hurt. Glory to God. However, we got to keep our eye on the prize. Keep our eyes on the prize. Keep our eye on Jesus because he is the author and the finisher of our faith. We got the amen. Press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God that's in Christ Jesus. So the church must periodically revisit and have a tune-up, if you would, amen, on our passion, our purpose, and our promotion. Question really is, how effective and efficient are we? I'm going to say again, how effective and how efficient are we? Fasting in prayer helps us to sharpen the knife. It helps us to rekindle, amen, where God is calling us to. It helps us to redirect the path back to the pathway on which God has originally called us to. That's what we got to get to, amen. Purpose brings us back to God's original intent, his original purpose for saving mankind in the first place. Glory to God, amen. When men lose passion, they start to wonder. When men lose passion, lose focus, Amen. Lose the desire to promote in Christ, we tend to wander. And when we get and when we wander and, and there's a sense of loss, we typically go back to what we are used to. We go back to where we're comfortable. We go back to where things make sense to us. And typically that's in a sinful place. Glory to God. So the church must re, uh, periodically revisit, amen, and have a, a, a checkup, if you would, please. Um, Concerning where God is calling us. Amen. So passion asks the question, amen, how is my fire? Amen. How is my fire? Am I still on fire? Does the fire, amen, need to be stirred? Glory to God. Does the fire need to be stirred? Amen. I'm from the country. Amen. And, uh, we weren't raised with, amen, uh, propane all the time. Sometimes we had uh, a wood-burning stove. They call it a, a pot belly, amen. And when that 
fire went down, it didn't mean that there was no fuel in the in the stove to burn. What it meant that there was some ashes, what the Bible called dross, but a man that had burned, but it was just uh, setting on the the a man the wood causing the wood not to burn hot. And so, the, hey man, there was a little poker always beside that little pot belly stove, and it needed to be stoked. It needed to be, hey amen, uh, stirred so that the ash that's already been burnt can fall to the bottom, and then the fire will burn bright again. Glory to God. And there are areas that are on the wood that has not been burned. Then typically the ends, uh, hey amen, or the part that's closest to the hottest part of the fire, and they got to be stoked and turned. And then all of a sudden you recognize there's plenty more to burn. Glory to God. It just, it just needed turned and need the ashes knocked off. Praise the Lord. Fasting in prayer helps stokes our internal fire. Amen. That God has given us. Thank you, Father. Through service, we can become dull of hearing. Amen. We can become heartless in our worship. And fasting in prayer brings us back to being effective and efficient. Thank you, Father. Amen. So passion, glory to God, passion for serving God, amen, must be periodically checked. Amen. At least we become lukewarm by drifting and becoming dull of hearing. We drift away from. So when we uh, present ourselves before God in the first part of the year, we are setting the tone for, amen, the rest of the year. We're setting the tone, we're growing even more, and we're coming into an alignment with the purpose, amen, of, of God for our life to become mature, amen. We're becoming sensitive to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. We're becoming back sensitive to the ministry. We're being sensitized. What, amen, is the Holy Spirit doing in the earth realm, and how do I align myself with that current project? Glory to God. Amen. How do I align myself with that? Glory. Uh, this week, we we uh, we were on purpose and in purpose talking about the condition of the heart because the heart is the control center. This is where my passion lies. This is where my understanding lies. And as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. We were given the charge from Ezekiel 36 in the fact that God says, hey amen, I'm going to do this for myself concerning Israel. Not because you've been so good. I do it for myself. I had I had uh, a concern for my name, says the Lord. Thank you, Father. And so with that said, he says to them, hey amen, your heart is the problem. It's a stony heart. It's an unresponsive heart. It's a heart that uh, glory to God has stopped responding to my presence, to my word. It has stopped re responding, amen, in every way it has become callous. You need a new heart. Glory to God. And so this fasting in prayer, glory to God, caused us to present ourselves before the Lord so that we can get a checkup. Not about anybody else, not about any part of what anybody else is doing. Glory to God, it's between me and God, amen, God asked uh, Adam in the beginning, after the fall, have you eaten of the tree that I commanded you not to eat of? That's a yes or no question, amen, but he shifted it, the blame shift, said that woman you gave me, it's the woman and your fault because you gave it to me. Glory to God, look how a, that sinful mind shift the blame away from the Amen. The party that need to take blame, take responsibility for it's the woman, and you gave it to me. It's her, it's her, and it's your fault. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Amen. So we have to be careful of becoming lukewarm. This Christian walk is not an automatic a timer. It's not automatic all the time. It requires some conscious, purposed maintenance to bring us back into our passion to being on fire, we need to be stirred. Glory to God. Purpose asked the question, why, amen, am I, what am I doing? Amen. In, and is it scriptural? Purpose. Am I, am I fulfilling my purpose? Do I know my purpose? Glory to God. Am I fulfilling 
the universal call and then the personal call? Am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing according to the scripture? Glory to God. That's what purpose ask. Glory to God. And uh, the late Dr. Miles Monroe says that where a purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. Amen. What purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. Uh, and if your adversary finds you, uh, amen, floating about, his desire is to find you something to do. And I promise you, it won't be holy. Amen. And I'm going to say it again. When your adversary notice that you don't have purpose, that you're not operating, amen, in your purpose, he'll, amen, his next desire is to find you something to do, amen, to build his kingdom. Since you're milling about not building God's kingdom, says, amen, he wants to implore you to build his kingdom, which is the opposite. Got the, got the Holy Spirit in within you building the devil's kingdom. Got the spirit of God, the spirit of promise in us, and we're working for the devil. Glory to God. Amen. Complaining, amen, all it does is make you a prophet for the devil. Glory to God. Amen. Without revisiting purpose, the church, can, amen, can be busy but not effective. Say it again, apostle. Amen. When church, church has to revisit purpose. Without that, we can become busy but not effective. Doing a good thing but not the right thing. Amen. Doing, I'm going to say that again. Doing a good thing but not the right thing. If I call you over to my house and I ask you to help me, amen, to replace the roof and you're busy more in the lawn, glory to God, that's good. The lawn might need, but I didn't call you to that. I didn't, I didn't call you, amen, to mow the lawn. I called you to the do, amen, the roof. Praise God. Now you are down more in the lawn, amen. And most folks that are putting a great effort into things they get mad when you talk about things that they're doing wrong because they're putting great effort in it. Amen. But here's the key word. It's wrong. You're giving great effort. We can give great effort to things and be wrong. Amen. Praise God. And so uh, when it comes time to pay, you, amen, it's going to be a problem because you did something that you weren't employed to do. Glory to God in the name of Jesus Christ. So we have to understand purpose. Revisit and scripturally Revisit and how we're dealing with one another. Glory to God. Amen. Promotion. Ask the question, amen. Uh, uh, has there been a God-given increase in the anointing that's on our life? Amen. Has there been a God-given increase? Has there been a God-given increase in the knowledge of God in Christ? Praise God. Amen. How's my service, amen, to the church and to the world at, no at large? So fasting and prayer brings the believer back into alignment with the purpose of God for our life in the name of Jesus. Amen. And so uh, uh, this is where we are and this is why we exhort you. And this is why we're encouraging and lifting. We're not just doing some religious observation at the beginning of the year just to make us feel good about ourselves. Amen. We're not doing that just to make us feel good about ourselves. Praise God, because we have died it good. My, amen. My, I drank water. Oh, I feel so good. No, 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 beloved. We are purposing to serve God with a more fervent zeal to increase and mature. Go beyond that last place that we did last year and to a greater place of maturity. The front line against error, against false doctrine, false brethren, false apostles, false uh, evangelists, false, all kinds of gift, amen, and the front line against spiritual attack is maturity. Maturity, amen, in the believer is, amen, the front line of defense against all type of demonic onslaught against the church. Glory to God. It's our level of maturity. This is where we are, and we got to go on now to perfection, amen. We can't keep milling about, amen, uh, failing in the same test. We got to go on from here now. Glory to God, because our flesh man wants to stay where it's comfortable, but God is calling us to another place in him. Glory to God, in the name of Jesus. Peter, do you love me? This is the question tonight. This is the question. Do you love me? Do you love me? Never mind what they're doing. Do you love me? 
Never mind of how the other disciples are talking and speaking rumors against you. Do you love me? Praise God. I'm not talking about, amen, uh, it looked like the pastor was preaching towards me today. Do you love me? Do you love me? This is I'm talking about you and I now. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not talking about nothing else. Do you love me? And if you love me, it will be demonstrated. It will be shown. It'll be manifested in how you treat my people. Glory to God. Like man can't say that I love, I love God and then hate his people. Praise God. I'm gonna come to church. I'm gonna sing and do my thing, but I can't stand them. I'm not trying to be with them. And as soon as it's over, I'm gonna leave because, you know, I don't, I don't really care for them. You know, you're in the dim. Praise God. And if the if the ship break down, you're gonna be on board with us. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. So we got to get out. Amen. We must keep our focus. Amen. We must keep our focus. Glory to God on what the Lord is calling us to. So this fasting and this prayer that we're calling you to, and I'm almost done to, amen, uh, and we'll go to Romans 6 at another time. This fasting and this prayer and this pressing, amen, it is it is for us, it's for you. It's for us, beloved that we may serve in the newness of life, in a, that we may serve on fire with, amen, that we may serve with greater passion and purpose and direction. And then God is going to promote us and take us to the next level. And here's the key that we're doing that in is from the inside out, from the inside out. Before I pray and ask God or say anything about what my wife or my children are not doing, Amen. I must first ask myself, when was the last time that you prayed for them in that area? As a leader, as a senior pastor, I have to ask myself the question, when was the last time I went before God in any meaningful time for the church before I say anything about what I want, I feel like God should change about the church. God told me this, amen, and I'll never forget it. He says, could it be the reason why she is the way she is is because you're not what I called you to be. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And the scripture says in Ephesians 5 and 25, husband, love your wife as Christ has loved the church, gave himself up for her. Amen. Praise God. And God says, since you haven't, what sense does it make for you to pray, asking me to move on her to submit to you and you haven't asked me Amen. To move on you to, so that you can submit to, to, to my calling. God says, if you if you'll never submit to me, she amen, she'll have a problem submitting to you because at that point it becomes man manipulation. Man manipulation. God says, when you submit, it's an automatic kingdom principle that'll happen. Amen. She'll amen. She'll submit and she'll hear you. But if you're not hearing me, I'll never open her ears to hear you. Why? Because you're out of order. And at that point, it becomes something like idolatry. Praise God. Worshiping of man. Manipulation. Glory to God. When was the last time you spent any measurable amount of time, any meaningful amount of time praying for your children? Amen. Not complaining about them, but praying for them. Amen. Coming into covenant agreement for them. Praise God. So I, I purpose during the fast to rekindle, amen, and have meaningful time praying for with, amen, uh, my children from the inside out. Am I the father that God you're calling me to be? Make me that father, amen, that, amen, I, I need to be for them. Not perfect, but whatever I need to be for them. So it's from the inside out, beloved. It's from the inside out. And so I must remove the plank from my eye, amen, so that I can deal with the sawdust that's in my wife and children and church eye. Praise God. So it's an introspect. This week must be an introspect. As we go up throughout the fast, start from the inside out. Glory to God as to what, what uh, you're, uh, uh, you present yourself before the Lord first. I know that's hard. I know that's hard. It's hard, praise God, to look within. But it's, amen, look in and look up. Then God, amen, typically he'll do the rest and he'll give you plan. Prayer is never a substitute for necessary action. Prayer is not a substitute 
for necessary action. I'm not saying re- put prayer where you ought to be doing something, but I am saying it should start with prayer. So if there's something to be done, if there's something to be done, then God will give you strategies. God will give you understanding. God will give you direction on not only what to do, but how, what spirit to do it in. Glory to God. Amen. So prayer is priority, but it's not all. Amen. Prayer is never a substitute for necessary action. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. It's never a substitute. So when God, but I start there so God can give me what to do and how. I want to do it in his spirit. I want to do it when I'm under control. The Bible says that a man that can control his spirit is greater than one that can take a city. So I got to do it. I have to make sure whatever I do, especially in the form of discipline, it is not to satisfy my anger, but it's to help direct their life. Say it again. Amen. Whatever I do in regard to discipline, it's not because I'm mad today. It's not because, amen, you done did it now. Uh, no, it's, it, it is. It should be for their holiness and for their destiny. Amen. Glory to God. When you get to where discipline or correcting children, your own or church, whatever the situation may be, when you get to where it hurts you more than it hurt them, I'm talking about your heart, and you you really don't want to, but you know you got to. Praise God. That, that At that point, the heart of Christ began to develop in you. Glory to God. And so this is where we are tonight. Amen. So my time is up, but I want to, I want to uh, encourage you. I want to provoke you. Glory to God. I want to exhort you, beloved. Glory to God. Amen. To progress. Press harder. Submit even deeper as we go along. Amen. Throughout the past. 